couple days ago, I received a question from Isaac. Uh, Isaac is 10 years old and lives around Bayou du Large. And, uh, his, his mom sent this question to us at Holy Cross. And uh, Isaac's question was this. Did God make the coronavirus? And, and if he did, uh, why did God make the coronavirus? Well, Isaac, God did not make the coronavirus. At least, God didn't make the coronavirus in the way that he made you. Did you know that God made your soul directly and immediately, and we can even say particularly? Like when you were conceived, God, God breathed your soul into you. How beautiful is that? God, God didn't make the coronavirus, uh, at least not like that. But God did make the world, and the coronavirus is, is part of the world. So, so how, how does that work? How does it make sense that God who made the world allowed the coronavirus to come uh, even though he's God? Well, let me tell you a story, a true story. Uh, in the beginning, after God made the heavens and the earth and all the animals and the trees and all of these things, God made man and woman, Adam and Eve. And Adam and Eve, God put them in the garden, and there in the garden with Adam and Eve, everything was perfect. They were united to God. They were united to each other. They were united with creation. All the animals, remember the story? All the animals came to Adam, and he gave them their name. And there, there was no strife or viruses or any b bad things in the garden. But then the, the serpent came, the devil came, and Adam, along with his wife Eve, chose to follow the serpent rather than to follow God. God had made Adam the king of the world. He was in charge of the world. And Adam, by choosing not God, by choosing to grasp at the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, by choosing to follow the devil, Adam gave control of the world over to the devil. And so now the, the Bible can call the devil the prince of this world because the devil has some, has some control. So in the Old Testament, in this, this book called the book of Job, Job asked God, why are all these bad things happening? And, and God comes and he tells Job, basically, Job, there is a reason. There's a good reason for these bad things to happen. But you can't understand it. God basically says to Job, I, I am God. I see the whole picture. I created the universe, and I created the trees, and the plants, and, and the oceans, and the mountains, and I created all the animals, and I created you, and, and I know what is good, and I, and I see it, but, but you can't see it because you're too small. And you and I, Isaac, whether we're 30 years old, or 10 years old, or 100 years old, we're too small to see why God allows bad things to happen like the coronavirus, earthquakes, tsunamis, the bad things that people do, we're too small to understand it. And, and, and God tells us that. But that's not the end of the story. Because, you see, since Adam had handed over control of the world to the devil, well then, that had to be taken back. The devil had to be deposed, to be knocked off his throne as the king of the world. And so what did God do? God came himself, and he knocked the devil off his throne. And you know how he did that? He cast the sword of the cross into the earth. Imagine you see the cross is kind of shaped like a sword. And God comes. He takes on a human nature. He does battle with the devil. And on the cross, he defeats the devil. And you know what else he does on the cross? He proves to us, he proves to you and to me that we can trust him. So when God says to Job, hey, I have a good reason for this, but you can't understand it. Well, maybe that's hard for you and I to believe. How do I know that I, God has a good reason? 
How, how, how am I not be expected to trust him? Well, because he shows us. He says, I am in it with you. You remember from the Bible, the name that's given to Jesus? It's Emmanuel. And do you remember what Emmanuel means? It means God is with us. And God is with us in, in everything, including in the suffering. So Jesus comes and he's born of the Virgin Mary, a lot like you and I were born. Not exactly, but a lot like that. He grows up and he lives a human life, a lot like you and I. He learned to pray with the Bible. He learned to sing the Psalms. He studied. He learned how to be a craftsman like St. Joseph. He worked hard. He worked with his hands and he worked with his mind. He ended up, when he was around 30 years old, he began to teach and to preach. He began to heal people and to cast out demons. He began to proclaim that the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is coming. The devil is being knocked off of his throne. Even though Adam had given control to the devil, he said, I I'm here now, and I'm the real king. And I'm going to bind up the devil, knock him off his throne, and take charge of this world, because I am God, because it is mine, and because you are mine, because I love God you. And even though you can't understand always why I allow evil, even though you can't understand always or you can't always see how I'm going to bring good out of evil, I want to prove to you that I can and that I will. So on Good Friday, Jesus Christ, God himself, the second person of the Trinity, dies on a cross. The worst thing that could ever possibly happen is that we killed God on Good Friday. And by dying on the cross, God shows us, I love you, you can trust me, and if evil ever happens to you, like a virus or a disaster, or even the times when just people are mean to us or hurt us or think bad things happen in our lives, that you can do like me. You can keep praying. You can keep loving and serving other people your friends, your family, the world, in all the ways that you can. You can follow my example and show my love and show your trust to everybody else. And Isaac, do you remember what happened after Good Friday? Jesus died on the cross, yes. Jesus was laid in the tomb. And remember, all of Holy Saturday, he stayed there in the tomb. And then you remember what happened on Easter Sunday? He rose from the dead. The best thing that ever happened in the history of the world in Jesus Christ rising from the dead was preceded by the worst thing that ever happened in the history of the world when we killed our Lord Jesus Christ. So no, Isaac, we can't understand all the reasons why God would allow evil. No, Isaac, uh, he didn't make evil like he made you, but he does allow it. We can't understand why, but he will bring good out of it. And as we see him on the cross with us, we can remember, we can even hold on to our cross real tight when it's hard, when it's hard for us to remember, that he loves us, that we can trust him, and that we should follow his example. And here's the last thing. The devil got knocked on, off his throne by Jesus Christ, but everything's not done yet. We're still here, and we're still fighting the battle. We're still in the midst of this. How do we fight the battle? We pray and we love. And what's going to happen at the end of the battle? Do you remember the book of Revelation? Jesus is going to come. And he's going to definitively or permanently take Satan out of the picture. And, he, and the Bible says that there's going to be a new heavens and a new earth. And in that new heavens and that new earth that's coming, there's no more coronavirus. There's no more earthquakes. There's no more hurricanes. There's no more evil at all. Because God will make all things new. 
Behold Isaac, says Jesus. Behold Isaac, I am with you, I love you, and I make all things new.